What's up, guys? Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com. I'm here with Brandon Janeka, True Grind Systems. We're here about 20 minutes north of Austin, Texas, in Leander, Texas, at the 180 Performance Center. Brandon is the owner here at True Grind Systems, and we're going to talk about in this video three really unique exercises that baseball players can use to get better on the field. I know you're going to preface this video a little bit about you know how they should be using this and stuff but give us three great exercises for baseball players to you know help take their game to the next level yeah absolutely and uh, uh, these are three broad exercises that, um, that I'm not using assessment for obviously the best exercise is the exercise that that matches the dysfunction the assessment but overall uh, we really really like Turkish get ups uh, here at Trigon Systems, uh, they're they're a huge staple in our in our programming. Our, our younger athletes do it uh, with just a shoe on their hand. Our upper level guys will start to add some considerable weight. They're up there, you know, 40, 50, 60, even even some 72 pound uh, Turkish get ups. Love that exercise. It, it's it's such a comprehensive exercise. It's great for shoulder stability. It's great for shoulder mobility. It's great for T spine, core strength lower half stability, glute activation, I mean, you name it, this exercise covers it. There's, there's a few different variations that we have in our arsenal that we could uh, uh, modify for the athlete specifically, but overall, uh, a Turkish get up is a, is a great exercise for baseball players. Uh, make a fist, okay. balance the shoe. Oh, like on top of the fist? Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. This is how we teach it. Uh, okay, where am so I here? I can't see your other arm. 45 degrees okay. off your side, good. So this is the most difficult part, okay. is getting this movement down. A lot of people try to crunch this movement up. Okay, this is not strictly a core exercise. We have to press down with this foot, getting our glutes in the game. Okay. I want our glutes to help us uh, sit up, okay? So when we press down, I'm not gonna roll over, I'm not gonna hit bridge up, I'm just gonna activate, okay? It's just a clenching of the butt, basically. As I do that, I'm gonna punch the sky. Good, keeping the eyes on the shoe. And then from there, I'll uh, turn around, or from here. Then we're gonna go to our hand. Good, and then we're gonna hit bridge up really high. Now I'm gonna take this foot, I'm gonna lay it down, and I'm gonna sweep it to where my knee is underneath my hip. Good, and I'm gonna sit back and stand up, or and sit up like this. I'm gonna take this foot. A lot of people use, they just swing that foot towards me. Uh, so yep, like that, and then stand up. Okay, so that's a half. Now we gotta go back down. So reverse lunge back. Find the ground at about 45. Good, hip bridge up. Sweep that leg back. Drop the hips. Drop the elbow. Drop the back. And there we go. Sweet. That was cool. I like it with the fist. Yeah. Like it brings a yeah, for level sure. of uh, yeah, that's, concentration. Uh, absolutely. And that's, uh, that's where we start our guys. There's a couple of uh, regressions like there's, we call it a Turkish sit up, which is just this. And so we'll just, we'll just work on that eight times or whatever. And then the baby get up is one step more. It's just this, and then the full thing. And then if you're doing the kettlebell, you're just basically laying the kettlebell on the backside the whole time. You can invert that beast too if you want. Ooh, not yeah, that. that's yeah. a that's a that's a yeah that's that's elite a, level right yes there. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Number two, I would have to say an SLDL, a single leg deadlift, or, or a single leg RDL, as some some uh, coaches like to call them. Great unilateral exercise that teaches the hinge, uh, which is a, a huge component to producing power. Hinging our hips, this refers to this movement right here. Baseball players need to be able to do that. They need to be able to do it on one leg and they need to do, be able to do it with a slight rotation. So it gets a little bit more complicated and, and the SLDL really does a good job of, of developing that single leg hinge, that uh, single leg balance and stability, helping the athletes become more repeatable, more consistent um, and stronger in their lower half. Awesome, so this is a uh, contralateral exercise, meaning the weight is in the opposite uh, of my working side. So the biggest fault or issue I see with this one is people are just basically uh, tipping at the hip. Okay, when we do this, I'm gonna take my foot and I'm gonna try to reach back with it. Okay, where I'm actually seeing my hips get negative ground and not just kind of getting out on my toes. And that's why we pay attention to weight distribution is because 
If you're just tipping, you're gonna be on your toes all day. If we're reaching back with this side, and I'm not even thinking bending over. I'm just thinking reaching back, keeping a good posture, and it's, my upper body's just kind of along for the ride. Obviously a good posture. Yes, sir. Reach back, money. Yep, and then up. And then are you touching when you come up or you try to stay? You up? absolutely can. Okay. I felt like I tilted a little much on yeah, that Yeah, you one. felt the rotation there. Oh, off balance. That's Here's right. a good one. No, just kidding. So, Still a little forward. Something as simple as that. What, right. you're, what you're feeling is an external rotation of the hip, which means you're externally ro uh, dominant, right? Which is good. Definitely want to be externally rotating dominant. Where it becomes an issue is the stabilization phase. So to stabilize a structure, you have to have equal forces on both sides. So if we're externally rotating dominant and I don't have the internal rotation strength to stabilize this hip, then I'm not going to be transferring force. And so it's really key not to rotate here to kind of show off the internal rotation strength, even though baseball is definitely, especially on the, um, on the drive side, is definitely an external rotation dominant leg, although the, the stride side is definitely an internal rotation. There's definitely a major aspect of the internal rotation on the stride leg, uh, as well as the back leg. Most guys are, are ER dominant though. But let, me, let me ask you this. That brings up a good uh, question that I thought before we get into the third exercise. Uh, what I've noticed over the years of doing thousands of repetitions as a pitcher, when I, like now, uh, I don't play anymore, but just from those patterns, when I close my eyes and try to think about putting my feet straight, my right foot it naturally opens up and rolls out a little bit. Like I'm on the side of my foot here just from years of yeah <laughs> that driving off is that something sure. you look at at current athletes and how, like are you trying to balance them or is that just something that they're they have to deal with because it's a one-sided sport or you know it, it's 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 impossible to compete with the reps of baseball uh, i i can never ever compete with how many times these kids throw like there's just it's impossible right so there are some things where we 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 try to moderate, mediate, just, just keep an eye out. Try not to let it get out of hand. The flat T-spine, um, something like that. Uh, it, the, the nature of the sport is gonna morph the body. Uh, usually guys have a lot more ER on the throwing side. I'm never gonna get those symmetrical. Now, the whole goal is to, and that's what we attempt, but in the back of my mind, I know it's never gonna happen until they stop. <laughs> so yes, that is, uh, that is uh, it's actually an awesome, awesome observation. Uh, it's definitely something that is noteworthy, uh, but nothing that we can really compete with. The, uh, the third exercise I would have to say, you'd have to add in a rotational power exercise, um, a med ball toss. One of our staple med ball tosses that really do a great job with teaching the hip load is our med ball scoop toss. Um, it's again, we're, we're holding the med ball and uh, with both hands underneath, we're kind of putting this med ball in our back pocket uh, opposite to the direction that we're throwing. And that's really gonna get the athletes in the hip load that we're looking for. We're gonna open up the hips and unwind as the med ball flies out of the hands and really, really teaching the rotational power. Uh, med ball scoop toss, uh, big key. We want the hands underneath the med ball. A big mistake that I see is athletes get their hands on the side of the med ball and they, and they end up like frisbeeing it out. Okay, I, I want the hands underneath kind of throwing the med ball all at one time. The setup of the scoop toss is, is, you know, basically an athletic position. The goal is to work this hip load on the back side. So we're gonna take this med ball, stick it in our backside pocket, loading this hip and unwind in a smooth, powerful motion, looking something like this. Underneath? Hands, hands underneath. Okay. Throw the med ball with both hands. Don't, okay. don't uh, frisbee it. There you go. When I do this, I always feel that I'm kind of dipping with the front shoulder forward. Yeah, you're going to do that. Okay. You're going to do that. That's going to be the, the main focus of this is the hip load. You should feel that nice, that nice stretch in the glutes right here, that, that tension in that back hip. I can see your hips rotating. You're doing it great. Uh, one thing that we want to focus, off, focus on is not spinning outside our, our power zone. That is not strong. That's not stable. That's not fast. 
That is good. So in pitching, I call that the angled corkscrew. Like I want to have, I don't want to be totally stacked because then like you're saying, I'm getting over that side. I want to have some, a little bit of internal rotation, knee just inside the foot, but I'm still getting that corkscrew when I'm, you know, got that counter rotation and driving out of it. Is that the same thing? Same yeah, idea? Yeah, it's absolutely the same thing. That works for some athletes. When I see a, a big spin off, what I'll do is like, okay, you want to do that? Let's, let's do that then. Let's go ahead and spin off and pause. Now I'll tell him, I'll take that knee and drive it towards the catcher. And go ahead and feel that, that muscle contraction. Spin off, get on the, outs the back outside of that foot, and then take that knee, and you can feel everything just freaking blow up. And that's stable. That's a stable hip. And now are guys who typically get to this point where they're kind of rolling out, are those guys who have hip mobility issues typically, or is it just? Mo mobility on the strength side. See, there's active range of motion and passive range of motion. They could have the passive range of motion, which I can take their hip and move it, but they can't move their own hip because they lack the motor control or strength to do it. Oh, cool. Right, so it's, a, it's more on the strength side of things than the uh, flexibility. It all comes down to mobility, so you are correct, but, but yeah, it's, it's definitely the strength, and that's why the assessment's so important. Let's do one more each. Yep. Good. That's sweet. Uh, the Turkish getup, if you guys have never done one, it's, it's tough. It's very tough. It is and, challenging. Uh, great exercise for baseball. The single leg RDL, especially from a pitcher's perspective, um, one of the things I see with young pitch pitchers of all ages is when they get to that release point, they kind of leak forward or leak out. And so the single leg RDL is huge to help uh, you know, be stronger on the front side because if you're if you're soft on your front side when you're pitching or throwing or or, or even hitting, you're leaking energy. So that's a great exercise to kind of help you stabilize and learn how to stabilize your front side. And lastly, the you know the the med ball throws huge. Obviously, it makes sense because it mimics the movements that we're doing on the yeah. baseball field so much. When I when we walked in here this morning, there was a guy doing a version of that. Talk about uh, what he was doing and like why. Some guys may be different and how you're trying to use the med balls um, to make guys better on the baseball field. So uh, that particular athlete that, that you're referring to is a, a collegiate level athlete. Um, he's actually a hitter, he's not a pitcher. Uh, but nonetheless, we're working on rotational power. Um, he did a version called the step back uh, scoop toss. And so real quick uh, demonstration, we're gonna take our back foot, and we're kind of step back as we enter that hip load. Um, that builds another degree of, of difficulty to the exercise itself. It's, it's definitely an advanced level from, from your just typical stay in one spot, scoop toss, which is again, a great exercise. Uh, this one gets a little bit of a plyometric feel to it uh, because there is a plyometric part of the exercise. When they sit back or when they step back, they're cued to get out of that hip quickly. We wanna, we wanna stretch that rubber band and pop it, okay? So that's kinda right here when we load and, and, and go. Um, it really emphasizes the hip load. It brings that plyometric aspect to the, the exercise itself, working on that reactive strength that, uh, that pitchers need. And then can you show one where you're doing the step back? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Are you, when you step back, you're, you're rotating or you're already yep. rotated? It's all one. Okay. Just kind of pop that hit back. There you go. That's sweet. And I know there's many more great exercises yeah. that we, we could be here for <laughs> hours, you know, picking your brain, all the yeah. knowledge that you have. Um, but those are some great ones to, to start with. And obviously, you know, program wise, you, you have to find someone who's knowledgeable and they can program this into what you're trying to accomplish. So if you're here, you know, in the Austin, Texas area, come on and uh, check them out. And uh, I'll leave all the information down below where you can get a hold of Brandon and everybody else here at the facility. And uh, thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. We'd be happy to answer them for you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me.